Continuing on with computational techniques of one-sided limits, I have another example to show you here. So let's just jump right into it. And my function here is a piecewise function. So to review what piecewise functions are is we have two or more separate pieces. In this example, we have just two pieces. We have my first piece. And this function is defined if x is smaller than negative 1. And we have our second piece. And this function is defined if x is greater than negative 1. So if we want to evaluate some points on this function, the very first thing that we do is we figure out where are we at. So if I wanted to plug in x equals 9, I would figure out which interval it fits in. Of course, 9 is larger than negative 1, so I would plug it in my blue or my second piece. If I wanted to plug in x equals negative 9, I figure out which interval it fits in. Negative 9 is less than negative 1, so I would plug it in my yellow or my first piece. So this piecewise function is defined two different places at two different intervals. And that's how all piecewise functions work. So we want to do the limits of this piecewise function. In part A, we're looking for the limit as x is approaching negative 1 from the left. Part B, x is approaching negative 1 from the right. And part C, as x is approaching negative 1. So if we go back and we review the techniques, of course our first step is always to substitute in the x value, ignoring the right hand and the left hand side. Now, we do have this extra stipulation here. If it's a one-sided limit and we are looking for a piecewise function, we need to plug in the appropriate piece. So that's what we need to do here. If I am looking for x is approaching negative 1 from the left, I'm going to find negative 1 on my intervals. Now, that's what separates my two intervals here. But I want to plug it into the one that represents the left-hand side. The left-hand side is obviously the smaller version of this. So that means I'm going to plug it into my yellow piece and only my yellow piece. You should only ever plug it into one part on your piecewise function. So again, the function that I'm looking at from the left-hand side is the yellow of x plus 1. So I substitute in my x value of negative 1 plus 1, and that gives me 0. So that tells me the limit as I'm approaching negative 1 from the left is going to approach my y value of 0. I suggest at this time you pause the video to see if you can figure out parts b and part c on your own. Okay, part B says we're looking at the limit as x is approaching negative 1 from the right. Again, negative 1 is our separator, so if we want the right-hand side, we're going to look at this interval. That is bigger than negative 1. So the function that I'm going to plug it into then is my blue function, the x squared plus 2x. So I substitute in my x value of negative 1. This gives me negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 minus 2. And then I subtract those, I get my limit of the right-hand side is equal to negative 1. Now I'm going to draw a picture of our graph here to help you understand what's really going on. But before we do that, we should already know the answer to part C. In part C, we want to know the limit as x is approaching negative 1. Not necessarily from the left or from the right, but if we do finite limits, remember the limit from the left needs to be equivalent to the limit from the right. If they're not equal, then our answer is it does not exist. So notice our limit from the left gave us 0. The limit from the right gives us negative 1. So since those don't match here, that tells us that our overall answer, or the limit as x is approaching negative 1, does not exist. Okay, let's go ahead and sketch this graph here so you get a visual of what's actually happening. So to help us sketch this graph, 
I'm just going to sketch each piece individually. So let me get rid of all of these colors here. And I'm going to put in some new colors. Let me draw the left hand side in blue, and I'm going to draw the other side in green. So first, let me draw the sketch of the graph of x plus 1. We know this is a linear graph because it's degree 1. My y-intercept is at 1, and my slope is 1. So to keep sketching this graph, I would count my slope of up 1 over 1 as many times as I needed. Or in the opposite direction, I would count it down 1, left 1 as many times as I needed. So here is the sketch of x plus 1. Now I have drawn this graph in its entirety, but I really know that I only want this graph when x is less than negative 1. So if I figure out where x is equal to negative 1 at, that's this right here, but I only want the less than part of it. So I want the left-hand part of this graph here. So I only want this part of this graph here. That's the left-hand side. So I need to get rid of that, and I need to get rid of everything else here on the right. So this is the graph of x plus 1 when x is less than negative 1. Now, I need a separator at negative 1 here. So if it's not or equal to, then I'm going to say, well, there's not actually a point defined at negative 1. So I'm going to fill that in with an open circle. Well, let me do the other version of this graph. I want to graph this x squared plus 2x. This is a degree 2 graph, meaning our graph is going to be a parabola. This parabola is going to be opening up because our leading term is positive. You can do the vertex formula to figure out where the vertex is actually at, and that tells us our vertex is at negative 1, negative 1. So here's my vertex of this graph. To help draw the rest of this graph, I need some extra ordered pairs, and you can plug in your own x values. If I plug in x equals 0, I figure out that I get out 0. If I plug in x equals negative 2, I figure out I get out 0. So the sketch of my second part of my piecewise function is this parabola here. But again, I only want part of this graph. I only want this graph when x is larger than or equal to negative 1. Well, my separator of negative 1 is right here. If I want larger than it, I want the right-hand version of this graph meaning I want this point and everything to the right of it. So let me get rid of everything else by erasing it. So I've erased everything else, leaving me with just this right-hand part of this graph here. Now, since this part is equal to, greater than, or equal to negative 1, that means at negative 1 in itself, I do have an actual point there, so a closed point. So this is what my piecewise function now looks like. So to help us figure out my limit, okay, the limit as x is approaching negative 1 from the left, I trace my graph in from the left, and notice it ends up at this y value right here, which is 0. If I trace my limit of negative 1 from the right, I'm tracing it from the right down here. And notice when I get to negative 1, I end up at this point right here, which is negative 1. So we can see how the visual of this piecewise functions work. Now, you've actually seen a lot of piecewise functions before. Every visual that I've shown you here, these all come about because of piecewise functions. But this is the first time that we've actually seen it in function notation like this up here. So whenever you see a function notation like this here, a piecewise function, it's most likely going to be drawn in separate pieces like we just did down here. Of course, since my limit from the left and the limit from the right don't match, that tells us our overall limit does not exist. So this finishes up my last computational technique of one-sided limits.
because we had to do the each piece of the one-sided limit appropriately. If we wanted the limit from the left, we did the left-hand piece. If we wanted the limit from the right, we did the right-hand piece. So that's where I'm going to stop this video here, but I'm going to have one more video going over an implied problem. How do we see these one-sided limits in day-to-day -day life? Where might they actually show up in a real-life setting?